Hello everyone, this is Bradley. So today this is a tutorial talking about the fluid text transition I've made earlier. Originally, I didn't plan to make a tutorial for this because I've explained the core principle, the particle animation, so many times in various tutorials. But uh, this time I changed my mind later because the, there is a part, a tiny tricky part, which I haven't really included in my previous tutorial or re the recording as well. So I think, okay, let's just do a tutorial for this. But I just want to mention that uh, many times you see a complex animation, but uh, in fact, it's just uh, an accumulation of simple principles that you learn throughout your learning process. So it's not necessarily complicated by itself. It's just an illusion that it's complex because it accumulates many details in that. Okay, so let's just stop. So here we in Blender, let's go snowing uh, because it's kind of very simple as I've explained. So let's, I've actually explained the text uh, building in my last uh, melting text tutorial. So let's uh, start with a string to curve. Okay. Uh, and uh, it will be better if you plug these strings to the group input so that you can customize that. And then take a fill curve. Within the panel, I'm going to type a geo. Let's take that as a center and the middle. I also want to transform it for a 90 degree because the instances are not accessible. So you need to realize the instance so that you can solidify and modify them for the extrusion effect. Uh, to In this particular case, I don't think it's necessary to create a more points or nice geometry using the remesh modifier, so I'll just leave it. But I'm going to shift the D to duplicate another one, and in this case, I'm going to type as node. Okay. Once we have all this kind of text, first let's uh, rename that as a text uh, and the text uh, B, whatever. And let's create a new object, new node tree, let's just name that as an animation. So we can rename that as an animation as well. Proper naming is a very important part when you're working. Although I actually do not agree really here. <laughs> and uh, select the text A and the text B. Okay. So once you have them, you no longer need to have all this kind of text. You can just hide them in the collection. Okay. And you can actually see your objects. If you take the original, then they were being reset at the word origin. If you take that relative, then you will have them moved as the original object. But uh, probably I will just keep that as the original in this case. Okay. So you take a joint geometry, uh, then you can see both of them. But I do not actually see both of them. I just want you to know that I'm going to use a preset which is called point issue. So that I can actually set the amount of points being generated. So if I only see the points, then this is what we are creating. That's why we do not need a geometry for the text objects by remeshing, because either way, we're not going to use their geometry. So basically do the same thing. The benefits of using this part additional view, you can almost specify the amount of points so that you are sure that they actually match. This is actually very important. I'm not kidding. Later, we're going to take a set of position and the mix vector uh, mix vector can also be thought as a mix RGB. And here, let's try to see if the position actually works because sometimes I'm not sure. And uh, it's not working. Yeah, because we need to transfer attributes if everything is going across the geometry. So the index index position is a vector. And the plug that in. Okay. So now we have everything being working. Uh, perhaps there isn't enough amount of particles, so you have to increase the amount. Let's take the group input so that we can synchronize the amounts in two places and three thousands. Another thing, this is time tweak because the this kind of method of distribution isn't a perfect. So and uh, it will always be better if we have more amount in the second object. So let's just multiply it as 1.1. 1. 1. Okay, so this is fine. Before I move on talking about the animation using this factor, I want to just finish this animation by 
uh, dealing with the points to volume and trying to decrease the radius also volume to mesh okay. and uh, just to try to tweak around all this kind of value okay uh, a very important reason for me to start with this animation is because I want to test the if the this kind of points to volume and the volume to mesh combination can replace the remesh modifier uh, there will also be a remesh modifier implemented in 3.1. So I'm not uh, sure how developer is thinking about this kind of nodes compared to the remesh modifier, but uh, I added the remesh modifier anyways for its kind of fluid effects. And you can try to play around this factor. It looks kind of whatever stuff. Here we are going to tweak some values within the original text object. So one kind of thing I'll tweak is the character spacing. So that's uh, it's a uh, little compact to each other. Another thing is you realize there is a very, very kind of weird spacing. This is because although previously I mentioned we do not a, a need a remesh modifier because we are distributing points, but the distribution of point is also affected by these kind of vertices. So in this case, instead of using triangles, I'm just going to take that to angle so that they are distributed more evenly because it's just angle. Okay, so let's go to the, yeah. Now everything is fine. Just to go to the animation. And I think this is kind of okay. You can tweak more values by your own in your free time. I'm not going to do that. To animate the factor, uh, it, I don't want to just uh, use a single constant value. So we're going to use the fourth. So let's just uh, take a directional fourth and I need uh, an empty object. So let's uh, select that empty object and plug in the fourth into the factor. So now this is kind of very weird result. It's not a very obvious. So let's also change the display of fourth into arrows so that we know the directional fourth. The directional fourth is exerting as one to zero when it's X mode. Otherwise, if you change the mode, then it becomes, uh, for example, Z mode or other things. But I think the center is always one and the terminals are basically zero unless you switch the direction. But that's another story. So you can try to play around with this kind of value. But here I'm going to stick with the X. And this is already actually kind of a basic animation. But uh, I just want to tell you a part which is not being included in the node. So let's uh, firstly add some noise to this entire setup. Uh, let's take a noise 3D and take a vector mass and switch that to scale. So the color goes to the vector and the fourth goes to the scale and it goes to the offset. So we can increase the scale and you can see we can no longer recognize the original nodes. So we need to take a float curve and trying to remap this float curve as 0, 1, 0 so that the, this noise is only effective when this fourth is between 0 and 1 which means in the middle of this transition. So now we can actually increase the scale so that you can actually see this incredible amount of water of whatever. <laughs> and if you want a more kind of smooth transition, then you can increase the size of your directional fourth, kind of a splash, splash effect. Okay. You can also try to play around with the frequency of your noise texture. Okay, so here I want to remind you there is one problem that uh, you see that this G is forming the N. And uh, when the O is almost getting completed, N is still not being completed. And at the last, there is still parts being merged to N and E is also being forming. So this is a kind of very interesting part the reason we are having this issue is because by default, this kind of node is evaluating the position attribute from this geometry. By the way, this kind of a socket of custom vector isn't really new because you can always see this kind of uh, sockets in various places. For example, you have a noise texture, then you see a vector. If you have a geometry proximity, then you also have this kind of vector. So this is 
by default always the attribute that it links to the geometry. So this is kind of basics of a field. In this case, this custom vector actually comes from this kind of uh, linkage. So the position from here, which is also equivalent to the position here. So it's actually the position of this current status and has no relationship to the, our final status of nodes. So if you want to have a kind of organization at the end, then you need to change the vector of your evaluation, which also means that instead of using the default, you're going to use the transferred attribute. So now we messed up the geo because everything starts to move, but we also start to recover and order that we form the N first, O next, D next, E next, S next. So this is kind of a trick. So as we are having finished the basic setup, the rest is just about the polishment. For example, what I want is to create another directional fall at a vector mass. And let's take a combine X, Y, Z. And then plug this directional fall on the Z axis, plug that into the vector. So here we can increase the maximum. Note that I'm not using the custom vector here, which means I'm dealing, evaluating based on the geo. Okay. And now you can see the geo is flying up. And now it creates such kind of weird, interesting, whatever. So you can try to play around with these kind of things. For example, increase the maximum. You can also play around this directional offset so that it's earlier affected. Uh, this is too much. Or you can actually play around with these skills. So basically, just play around with these kind of settings, and you should get some interesting idea. Also, possibly with the kind of the skills, also evolutions. So, kind of idea. Uh, another possibility is that you can plug another vector mass. So, for the geo, we're moving that upwards. So, for the nodes, we are going to start from the below. Kind of interesting idea. And we still need the same four, which has the custom vector. Or you can create a new four with the custom vector, it does not really matter. But the, here I'm going to take, let's say, and the map range that's from below. Something like that. And let's try to see. Uh, probably not very prominent if we're using the same directional fall. So let's try to play around with the direction offset. Yeah, then we get something like that. It's just it's kind of a for fun. <laughs> so basically the end idea is trying to play around all these kind of settings until you are satisfied with the your result. Uh, there is one thing I forgot to actually mention is the material. Because usually if you're creating objects within the geometry nodes, then you need to set a material. So for example, let's add a material. And if you change the color, then it should show the color, but in this case, it does not. The reason is actually because this uh, remesh modifier is not propagating the attribute. So you lose all this kind of selection by default. Uh, this is a bomber. And uh, this is a, basically a limitation in 3.0. So what you have to do is probably create a new geometry node tree. And in the new geometry node tree that you set up. So now this way you resolve it. This is definitely not a preferable method because you have to consider so many other things you cannot you can barely do the color transition, in my opinion. But uh, anyway, I think this is the limitation you have. What else I can do? So this is it. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I'll probably see you next time. Bye-bye.